It was places like this I came to because there was nowhere else to go. It's a lonely life when you've got a needle or a bottle. It's the loneliest life in the world when you're surrounded by people. Where's the microphone? I don't normally need a microphone. I think he wants to preach a sermon, that fellow. We'll give him the mic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be surrounded by people, all enjoying themselves and to feel alone. Some, some of you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, of course I do. In fact, it's even lonelier when you're surrounded by people than when you're on your own. Because when you're on your own, you've only got one thought. Where am I going to get my next fix from? Where am I going to get my next bottle from? Right. But people confuse you when they're around you, and you're trying to speak to them, and your mind is elsewhere. I remember so often. I remember the days I went to bed at night, and I would look down and think, is there enough to last me through? Mm. Probably four, five, six litres of sherry at the side of the bed. Is there enough to get me through till morning? Mm. And it was nearly dawn then. Mm. I'm hearing you. And do you know, there was never enough to get me through till never. the morning. Yeah. Do you know, it was wonderful when I was young and I used to see full bottles of alcohol. But when I became an alcoholic, there were no full bottles. Yeah. As soon as you crack the top, you no need to pour it, you crack the top, yeah. it was nearly empty. Yeah. Because that is the mindset. Mm -hmm. And you know, the day I came to Jesus, there was a full bottle there. There was a full bottle there, and all, he said, all you've got to do is crack the top. And no matter how much you use, it'll always be full. Amen. And you know, that's what I found with this Jesus I serve. That no matter how much I drink of him, I've still got a full bottle. Hallelujah. And it will never, ever run dry. Amen. You see, he says he is the light of the world. In other words, you don't have to put 50p in the meter. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been great sometime for me, you know, because I remember I did, I did have to leave one house because I'd done the meter and I had to leave before they turned up. <laughs> They never found me, and one day I'll go back and tell them who it was. <laughs> but I used to hate having to put that pound in the meter. And it wasn't enough to last me through a couple of days. And I only used the lights. Yeah. Going out, begging money. I remember my first <laughs> fur coat. Oh, it was beautiful. It looked like it came off a mangy old cat. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody given it me in one of these places, it was black and there were, there were more holes in it than there was fur. Oh, I was so proud of that coat. And I remember one day I'm walking down the street skydiving, you know how we do, picking fag ends up. Yeah. It's alright, I'm one of you, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Skydiving and I was having a great day, I had a pocket out here. <laughs> And I was just going to, I was just starting on my other pocket, and I'm walking along, and somebody says, "You're smoking." I said, "No, I've not rolled them up yet." You're smoking, and I looked down, and my pocket was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I picked one up, and somebody, it must have been fresh on the ground, and I'd not checked it, and I'm walking along with my best fur coat on. And suddenly it had another hole in it, and it was, it was red. <laughs> and I had to throw the coat off and jump up and down on it. And I wasn't bothered about the coat, I was bothered about all these fag ends I got, or I'd lost. <laughs> and somebody came and they threw water on it, and I thought, well, that's the end of them fags. <laughs> and it wouldn't have been so bad, but they got me papers as well, so I had no papers and I had no fag ends. Oh, and I had a miserable day. Oh, no. oh, it was a miserable oh. day. It was even worse than the day when they told me that I only had six months to live. Do you know, when, when you depend on these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, when, that's what I say, I look around and I see you all. I see you all as I was. And in my heart, you know I'm still the same. No doubt. No matter where you go in this Jesus of yours, 
He changes your way of thinking. He changes your heart. But he doesn't change you. That's right, yeah. He leaves you with the independence that you want. That's the wonderful thing about the Jesus I know. When he tells me to do something, well, he doesn't tell me anything. He asks me. Do you know, he's so polite. And he asks in such a way that I can't refuse him. And this last few weeks, we've had a great servant. He's kept ringing me up and ringing me up and ringing me up just to make sure I was coming here. I don't know what he'd done if I'd, if I'd not turned up tonight. <laughs> but he's there with a big cross round his neck. And I like it for one reason. He's got an empty cross. He's got an empty cross. I changed an empty life for an empty cross. My life, if I thought it was full, it was just full of dirt. It was full of evading the police, evading people who wanted money off me, <laughs> evading people who had, had screwed up. And then I came to this Jesus of mine, and I said, Lord, if you're real, prove it to me, and he did. He proved it in a way I could understand. He gave me sleep. I wonder how many of you here are like I used to be. I used to dread going to bed at night. Yes. Because I knew what was going to happen in the night. I knew the nightmares that were going to come. I knew the shakes that would be there in the morning. I knew that dry feeling in my mouth. But you couldn't get, it like having a crust on your lips. You couldn't get rid of it. I used to dread coming out of the house in the morning in case I met somebody. I used to walk down the street thinking they don't notice. They don't notice I'm, I've had a drink. And I was bouncing off the walls. Literally. I used to know which, what, which street I went down by the, the, way, the places where the bruises were when I got home. Because I used to bang off every wall and doorway on my way up. But you see, that to me was a life. And look what he's given me. Do you know there's only one difference between you, any of you, and me. There's only one difference. He gave me a job to do which is different to yours. Because I'll tell you, I don't know if you know this Jesus. I don't know if you laugh at him. I don't know if you just take his name in vain. <coughs> I don't know if you use him just for convenience. I'm not bothered, it's nothing to do with me. But I don't know one thing, this Jesus that I serve, this Jesus who wants to know you individually, do you realise the king of the world, the creator of the world? Amen. Have you ever thought of trying to get to see the Queen of England? You'd never get through the gates of Buckingham Palace. The same thing. Have you ever tried it? Have you ever thought of going giving Kate Middleton a hug? Can you imagine? I know you'd love to. <laughs> Take your hat off, you're getting excited. <laughs> He's going red now, and it's time now look like a teapot. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we're all the same. Yeah. We're trying to get to Kate Middleton. You can't do it. No. If you send a letter, it doesn't even get to her. You know that. It only gets to the desk that somebody's going to reply and say, we have made her aware. But she knows nothing about it. Even the reply is a lie. You can't get to them. You can't even get to your MP unless you trip him up. And then he'll have an excuse for it. But the king of the world, the man that made the whole universe, the man who one day just threw his arms up in the air and there were stars in the sky, He's waiting to hear from you. I didn't bring the telephone tonight because I don't need a telephone tonight. I've got a one-way line straight to him. I don't need to borrow you because I've, I, if you've got friends like I had, there's no way I want to speak to them. They might want something off me. But I've got a one-way line to this Jesus. Have you? 
And when he replies, are you listening? 